Hi, it's Ruth here from My English Future. Today, I really want to help you learn something that is a little bit high level, but I know how important it is. We call this parallel structures. Parallel just means the same. You must use the same or equal structure when you compare two things. This will definitely help you get a higher IELTS score. How are you with ING nouns, or some teachers call these gerunds? Eating and sleeping are my two favourite things. You can't say eating and I like sleep. It doesn't work. You must use the same structure, eating and sleeping. But, of course, many sentences are more complicated. Look at this one. We've got ing, driving, followed by preposition in and country. You must copy this structure. So here we have it again, driving, but in a different country. Read the sentence with me, because this will help you with your writing and your speaking. Here we go. For me, driving in the USA and Europe is harder than driving in England because they drive on the opposite side of the road. And notice this little verb is because driving is singular. What about other nouns and noun phrases? Read this one. The economy in China is dependent on the economies in several other key trading partners, such as, and then there are three examples. We have the economy in a country, and then the economies in and several countries. They match, so that's perfect. Farmers tend to watch the weather forecast much more frequently than city dwellers. This is just a simple plural noun here and again farmers or city dwellers. You can't write farmers watch the weather much more frequently than people who live in the city. Well you can but it won't get you a high score. I prefer horror movies to romantic comedies because they are less predictable and keep me on the edge of my seat. Can you see the parallel structure? Horror movies, romantic comedies. Over the last year, the growth in international student enrolments at Australian universities has been double that of other English-speaking countries. Oh my gosh, this noun phrase is so long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine words for one noun. So we don't want to repeat. It's too boring for the listener or the reader. So what do we do? We can just use the word that, but only if we are comparing to a noun, the word growth. Okay, let's move on to prepositions. People in the outback of Australia experience drought much more than those along the coast. When I say this sentence, my focus is on this part, in the outback, and along the coast. So you must keep it the same. I see many students make this silly mistake. People in the outback of Australia experience drought much more than the people who live on the coast, with a relative clause, but that's not the same. So keep it the same with a preposition. Sitting in the middle of the plane is not as bumpy as at the back. Can you see it's the same? 
in the middle or at the back. Let's move on to verbs. Lemons make water more acidic than limes do. Aha! Now with verbs it gets tricky. The verb is make. But a good English speaker and writer will not repeat the word make. A good English writer will only repeat the auxiliary verb do. I dislike white wine, but my husband loves it. The focus is on the verb about liking or loving or not liking. So dislike and then loves have the same structure. Over the last year, international student enrolments in Australian universities has grown twice as much as it has in other English-speaking countries. Here the focus is on the growing, has grown. But do I repeat the word grown? No, you don't need to. You only repeat the auxiliary verb has. And the last sentence is an exception because the verb is be. Can you see here? He is more fluent than her. Some people might write or speak, he is more fluent than she is. No problem. But most native speakers, because the verb is be, we don't have to repeat it. He is more fluent than her is fine as well. Now, just before I finish, let me stress to you, this is super important in IELTS and will help you get a better score, especially when you are comparing. Look at this table from a real IELTS test. The spending on leisure and education in Sweden, so we're looking at this column, and we have a noun phrase. But it's a very long noun phrase. We don't want to repeat all of the words, so we just use the pronoun that. The spending on leisure and education in Sweden was almost exactly the same as that in Italy. So here we've got 3.2%. And here we have 3.22%, almost exactly the same. Wow, these noun phrases are so long. But it is correct. Consumption of tobacco, food and beverages in Turkey was double the consumption of the same products in Italy. I didn't want to repeat tobacco, food and beverages. So you can write of the same products and your examiner will love you. Here are a couple more examples with a line graph. But these ones focus on the verbs. A past simple verb, a past simple verb, a past simple verb phrase and another past simple verb phrase. All matching. Do you write like this? And finally, what about your essay writing? Here is a task 2 essay question about genetically modified food or GM food. And the question asks if it's the best solution. Many farmers need to use genetically modified seeds to prevent pests destroying their crops. But opponents of GM food believe that it does not prevent this. The focus is on the verb to prevent. So the writer repeats the verb, match the verb, does not prevent this. There are many countries that still suffer from a lack of food. This now is a noun phrase. 
so you must repeat the noun phrase. Meanwhile, others have an abundance of food. So many students mess this up and write, meanwhile, others do not have enough food or something like this, but it doesn't match because this is article, noun, preposition, noun. Try to keep it parallel. And this one just uses adjectives. Easy. Many countries do not have enough, while others have plenty. No problem, but keep them the same grammar type. I hope that's been helpful. Of course, you know my name, Ruth. You can find me on YouTube. Just look up My English Future or Facebook, and there's my website. Bye.